Good morning, it's me, Josh Carpo, with another installment of uh, <laughs> morning videos. <laughs> uh, today, I guess I'd like to consolidate a couple videos I made yesterday. I actually made like, <laughs> uh, I had some stuff to do, I had to go to DEQ, it was a nightmare, I spent two hours there waiting in line and made a couple of videos while I was waiting. And, decided not to upload them just because they were more, you know, made for just something to do, entertainment processing, but uh, during the time when I was making, the first one I made was about, was about driving and going places, and I was talking about how we, I was trying to use the example, if, if you're a person who drives a lot, um, I, I try to consolidate this. When I came back from Montana from a long road trip years back, I remember after that I had to go run an errand, run to town, and it was about, you know, whatever, half an hour, 45 minutes away. Um, that was just nothing to me, driving an hour or an hour and a half after a trip like that, because it was put into perspective by driving for days on end. Whereas if you've been stuck at home for a long time and you don't get out much, then it may seem like a nightmare to drive 30 miles or 50 miles. This perspective is based on us becoming comfortable in our zones and our usual routine and system. So for me, just to pick up and go out and just do something, it's, it's harder because I've been a homebody with my kids for so long and uh, I don't really go out and do much. So when I got the uh, DEQ done, I decided I'd go to town to Lake Oswego where my buddy lives and go to the DMV there. So I waited another hour and a half to get my tags. And then uh, went over to my friend's house and we started talking about, uh, I guess the line for this song, the line for this video or the title should be Someday Never Comes. Because it was the song that popped into my head, um, I'm sure a lot of you know it, but it's a Creedence Clearwater Revival song, Someday Never Comes. And it's this idea that um, we're always waiting for the next thing, we're always um, waiting, someday I'm going to take care of this, someday I'm going to do this, and um, it's always around the corner. And this isn't just getting things done, you know, I'm talking about like, things will change, things will change, and we've got to make them change, you know, it's uh, in our own lives, we're not going to wait for them, you know, to change, it's, um, I don't know, we got into this discussion, my buddy and I, yesterday about, uh, about uh, the economy. And uh, we started talking about, because he, he's upset because they want to raise the minimum wage to like $20 in Oregon. And uh, knowing his, his family owns a business, so I'm sure that he's talked with his brother about this. And basically the conclusion they've reached is that by raising the minimum wage that high, they're going to push everyone, all the businesses, to spread the cost out and that we're going to end up paying for that extra wage. And my argument to him was that uh, regardless of whether or not, uh, put it this way, minimum wage going up is the only way to get relief for people who live paycheck to paycheck. And the minimum wage, the prevailing minimum wage is not increasing with the living costs, and we know this. So my argument was that no matter what it takes, if employers have to pay a little more, then they will just be forced to cut corners, figure out a different way to make it work. But my thought was just a few bucks more an hour per employee, sure that can add up, but we're talking about businesses that are making a lot of money. And if you have a small company with a few employees, let's say, I'm sure there should probably be different rules, but should there really? I mean, is $20 an hour really that much money for a person to work? We just have different views on it. And neither one of us really know shit how the economy really will respond to these things. Because, like, he's, he's right in a sense that, you know, yes, the employers will put that cost on to uh, the people, but my thought was this. There's no way for the average person to get money. We're waiting for that, and this is why I'm using this example, is because the whole someday never comes thing, in the sense that one day, you know, the empl one day the minimum wage workers will make a fair wage, and, and one day, you know, we'll be able to pull our heads out of our asses. But when that day finally comes, people 
are <laughs> people are convinced that it's going to harm the economy by raising minimum wage. The only thing that I can see out of that is um, that big business has been telling them that. The corporations have been telling us that, and they're probably putting commercials on. They're probably talking. I don't watch the TV, so I don't know, but there's probably commercials on talking about how it's going to hurt employers and you're going to end up paying this and that. And so the average person who's making a really good money might look and say, I don't want minimum wage going up because then my prices will go up on things. But the minimum wage workers will all want it to go up, and there are many more of them. And they're usually serving the people who are making more. It's a matter of the middle class keeping the lower class down at this point. <laughs> I mean, it's, they don't even realize they're doing it, is what I'm saying. You would think that the middle class would want to pull people up and try to help them. The thought is that, you know, people run the, their mouths by saying, you know, oh, people just want to suck off the system, and they just want to milk it, and everybody just wants to live on welfare. I haven't met anybody who's proud of welfare or food stamps or living on that stuff. Everybody I've ever talked to who has any government assistance feels guilty about it and wants to get back on their feet and get going, but just cannot make enough money to make it happen. So, my thought on this is, um, yeah, raise the minimum wage to 20 bucks, you know? See what happens. You know? If, <laughs> yeah, sure, the costs will be spread around. Uh, I, my argument to my buddy was that maybe they will, uh, that businesses will start to streamline a little bit and stop being so wasteful. And he said, they'll never do it. He said, what he thinks they should do is lower taxes on the poor. And I said, they'll never do it. <laughs> so it's two sides of the same you know, deal, the same point, I guess. I, no matter which direction you take, you know, you're gonna have problems. Whether you raise minimum wage or lower taxes, um, there's always going to be somebody to complain about it. I agree with him in the sense that I think that they should drop the taxes for the poor. In fact, if you make minimum wage or under a certain amount a year, you should never pay taxes. I won't even get into the tax system and how it cheats the people, but uh, the reality is it is what it is. People will be taxed. And if there's a chance to raise the minimum wage to help them do that, then uh, do it up. That's the way I see it. People need help and they're not making enough to live. So, maybe when that someday does come, we won't even recognize it. Because people will be telling us that it's a bad choice. And it's my thought that if there's a lot of uh, resistance against raising the minimum wage, it's probably not from the people. It's probably from the businesses. Because they're the ones that have enough money to advertise and tell you not to vote for it or whatnot, you know. So, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Everybody's got an opinion. That's mine. And, uh, yeah. Have a wonderful day, peeps.